Well, the week actually started last night where we had Western Michigan and Ball State battle it out. Western Michigan was started 6-2, and two, and they dropped their third straight game. They went to overtime with Ball State and Muncie, and Ball State won their first November game since 2014. It's been a while since the Cardinals have been relevant late in the season. And Western Michigan in overtime decided to pull a West Virginia versus Texas and go for two, go for the win. And they called the James Franklin fourth and five play against Ohio State. Halfback draw, up the middle, nothing going. Ball State wins. Western Michigan was fans were very displeased with the call. And they gave up 42 points to Ball State, who had been struggling all year. And the defensive coordinator got fired just right before the MAC games kicked off today. So there's some staff changes already going on in Kalamazoo. The Broncos are now 6-5. Six and five, And 6-6 six and six is a possibility. And if you remember last year, Western Michigan was one of the three six-win teams that didn't get a bull bid. So that could happen again this year if they lose four straight going into bowl season with NIU remaining on the schedule. That segues us into NIU Miami, one of the two games going on tonight. Honestly, there's nothing to see so far. It's three to nothing Miami. It's been a sloppy game. Good defenses, nothing really on offense so far. NIU and Miami are just trading punts basically right now, and that game's at halftime. Still anyone's game. But for NIU, they they beat BYU seven to six this year. So that's a very on brand Northern Illinois type game. So they're still in good position. But they did clinch the Mac West last night with the Western Michigan loss. So we can guarantee that NIU will be in Detroit for the championship game for the seventh time in nine years. That's some Boise State type domination of the conference. And then the one other game going on right now is Buffalo, Ohio. We just mentioned it. Oh, it looks like oh, it looks like something was going on there right now, but Ohio's up 45 to 10 on Buffalo. Buffalo is nine and one in receiving 29 AP votes. But just now you can assure the Bulls will not be ranked. And with NIU being the second best MAC team, there will not be a single MAC team ranked this year. And that is for certain. But Buffalo will st- still probably get in the MAC championship game. All they have to do is beat Bowling Green next week. So just to run the numbers on what uh, Steve has clarified for us in the MAC Western Division, Western Michigan loses last night to fall to four and three. Therefore, that hands the division championship to Northern Illinois. 6-0 and with that brutal non-conference slate in which they lost uh, three tough games out of conference to the likes of Florida State, Utah, and Iowa. Uh, 6-0, and so they are moving on to the championship game again. Buffalo comes in at 6-0, and I believe just a three-point favorite against Ohio. And uh, the Bobcats at 4-2, and also Miami at 4-2. and So, therefore, we still have an opportunity for one of those teams, obviously, especially Ohio with the head-to-head factor going for it with the uh, huge lead tonight against Buffalo to pull off the upset, come all the way back from two games down, depending on the Buffalo result in the the final week of the season, Steve, for somebody else to sneak up, that being Miami or Ohio, to win the uh, Eastern Division Championship. Buffalo pretty much has the Eastern Division. in. Let's see, in, say, Big Ten terms or something, Bowling Green beating Buffalo would be like expecting Rutgers to pull something off over Michigan or Ohio State. Not exactly to that magnitude, but Bowling Green has had a bad football team the last three years, and right now they're 2-8. and eight. They did beat a 1-10 in 10 Central Michigan team last week, and their only other wins over an FCS team. And going in and playing Buffalo, I, I think the Bulls will rebound from this, and they'll be facing the Huskies in the title game. Buffalo hasn't been in the MAC championship since 2008 when Turner Gill led them to upset Nate Davis, Brady Hoke, and the 12-0 Ball State Cardinals. So it's been quite a run for Buffalo. The Bulls will just miss out on a ranking this year with this loss. Glad to be joined by Steve Helwick. You can catch him on Hustle Belt. It's the SB Nation platform for MAC Athletics, talking the football championship scenario With Buffalo and Northern Illinois, much like Georgia and Alabama in the SEC, it's all ready to go for us right here, albeit Bowling Green does take the field against the the Bulls next week with a chance to knock Buffalo out of first place. But we'll assume here it's Buffalo, Northern Illinois. Give us a bit of a two-week-in-advance preview of this one. Very contrasting styles. Buffalo has the better offense by far, NIU more defensively sound 
Northern Illinois has former All-American Sutton Smith. He's been a little quieter this year because he's not leading the nation in sacks, but he's still been a menace. I think he has nine sacks this year and is tied for seventh in the nation in that category. And last week against Toledo, he blocked a punt, recovered it, and returned it to the house for a touchdown by himself. Sutton Smith, leader of this NIU defense, just an incredible junior. NIU has some other, other pieces like Kyle P. Defensively, that, that's NIU's identity. The Huskies' biggest problem, though, is establishing an offense. They have a bit of a run game with running back Trey Harbison, but this has actually been a recurring problem even when Jordan Lynch was on campus. Northern Illinois hasn't had a downfield passer. They don't have, like, those Big 12-type quarterbacks, uh, a Will Greer or Taylor Cornelius that just likes to go deep a lot. Northern Illinois really struggles with downfield passing. But on the other hand of that, Buffalo's Tyree Jackson is actually second this year in passes attempted more than 20 yards. So we're going to see a lot of deep balls from Buffalo, but not really NIU. Buffalo has Tyree Jackson, the 6'7 quarterback, who's already getting looks from NFL teams, probably not this year, but maybe in the following draft. And Buffalo's offense is equipped with a lot of weapons. Anthony Johnson and K.J. Osborne make up the best receiving duo in the MAC outside of Toledo, maybe even better than Toledo this season. And then the running back, Jarrett Patterson, he's a freshman running back, and he's become just a human highlight reel this year. He wasn't really high on the depth chart early in the season, but he's made his way up, and Patterson's looked really good, very fast and shifty running back, and that's really allowed Buffalo to open up the offense and become more versatile. Then Buffalo has a good a few good defensive pieces. Harris leads the pass rush, and Khalil Hodge from the middle linebacker position. It's the second great Khalil on this campus as a linebacker lately. Khalil Hodge has had a pretty good season so far, except the Buffalo defense really hasn't done their job tonight with a 45 to 10 loss to Buffalo. This is a 45 10 deficit to Ohio right now. This is the first time we've seen the Buffalo defense really struggle this much since the Army game, although they did give a 42 to Miami and a 51-42 victory.